Hi, my name is Jason Newland, and I wear a couple of hats here at Allegiant. First and foremost, I'm the multifamily specialist for the uh, the middle of the country, several states. Uh, I, I make sure that the conversation between everybody in that food chain is, is going according to plan. From the owner, to the architect, to the GC, to the developer, to the, the access control from the hardware, making sure that everything is, uh, we're all having the correct conversation. The next one that I do is I'm also the electronics team lead. So anything with a battery or a wire or access control related kind of works for me as well. So that kind of gives me a unique perspective on what today's topic is. Uh, prop tech and the uh, access control for the multifamily vertical itself. Uh, prior to being at Allegion, uh, I was an architect for 15 years. So I am still licensed and registered in the states of Kansas and Missouri. So I've, I've sat on several different uh, sides of the table in terms of some of these projects that we're going to be reviewing today. Straight out of the gate, we're going to be reviewing exactly what this means. We're going to do an introduction to the prop tech, you know, the word prop tech, what does it mean? Uh, how do I bring it to life? You know, where exactly am I in my building process? And then how do I implement that for my own project and my own property? So again, we, we keep hearing this term prop tech. What is it? You know, and how is it relevant? How is it different from what we're referring to as access control? Is there anything that I need to do or is it just somewhat of a buzzword? Uh, and more importantly, how is it relevant to my property and project? So again, prop tech or property technology is the application of technology, products and services in multifamily buildings that provide seamless and convenient experiences for residents, property managers and owners. That's a lot. But what does that mean in lay terms? Basically, there are dozens, if not hundreds of different software partners out there, and they all do one thing. They all open a door. But just like there are different verticals, you know, there, I, I don't necessarily want somebody to use a software that is set up primarily for a K-12 scenario or a hospital scenario or a government building. Could I use that to open the doors on my on my apartment building? Sure but it's somewhat of a square peg in a round hole. So what PropTech is, is a series of software partners that are built from the ground up for the multifamily vertical. They tie into those things that are relevant to my building. You know, if do I need to concern myself with thermostats or rent payments, some of the property management leasing software, leak detection, you know, am I going to be a, the ISP and provide Wi-Fi to my residents, or is that not relevant to my particular building? Some of those features are what we kind of include under that prop tech uh, umbrella. And generally, as it says here, prop tech is a, you know, kind of an equal parts on the hardware and the software. Now, that being said, not everything on the prop tech list will be relevant or important to your property. There are differences in each multifamily vertical itself, just like there's a difference between a K-12 and a hospital and a government, government building. There are also differences in different, you know, multifamily buildings. When you hear the term multifamily, most people think of a, you know, mid-rise or high-rise typical market rate apartment building. Uh, it may be new construction or it may, it may be a renovation. But what about senior housing? Is this a 55 and older apartment building or is this a assisted living or an independent living or is this including any sort of memory care? Those are going to have completely different requests and requirements than something that is more student housing focused because on the student focused or student housing side, it may be an on campus dormitory. It may be an off campus independently owned apartment building that I'm just renting to that's near the uh, near the university campus. When I'm looking at a student housing project, the residents are probably going to have different requirements and requests and generally be more tech focused than something that's more senior housing focused. So determining which vertical and sub vertical I'm in, then from that point forward, I can help determine what's important to me and what's fitting within my timeline and budget. Now, in addition to that, not only will prop tech help attract the residents who are expecting these technology pieces in their homes, which can then allow for a higher rent. It can also lower the operational costs. Everybody worries about the rent, which that is absolutely at the front of mind. But if on the flip side, I can also lower my operational costs, you know, i.e. being able to better handle a lost fob or what about a, a resident lockout? 
do I need to worry about sending staff to open that door for the resident or can I do it remotely? Um, or I can see when, which areas of my building need to be staffed, you know, which one needs to have access. When do I just need to worry about having the door open or a gate open? Um, one of the, the high use times of particular areas, can I monetize those spaces? Can I allow somebody to, you know, uh, reserve a space for a kid's birthday party? Um, all of those things are what could be relevant to your building as opposed to the one across the street. Now, how it improves the safety and security. Everyone gets very, very stuck on when they hear the term access control, that it's the unit door. Everybody's worried about the, the, the deadbolt itself, but prop tech and the access control for the multifamily vertical spans the entire building. Yes, of course, it's going to start with the, the unit themselves. There are you know, different types of electronic locks for the units but it will also span the, the common area access. It will include the perimeter. Do you have a mixed use building where there's commercial on the first floor and, and multifamily living above? Do I have to worry about two, multiple uh, entrances? Is there a parking garage that I have to worry about getting you know, a car gate into? And then as uh, in the modern day that we live in, what about package delivery? Is there always an Amazon person coming every day? Is there always a DoorDash or a food delivery person always coming every day? Is my building gonna have on-site staff where I can handle that with my own people? Or do I need to have a package delivery room? Or do I need to have a guest intercom access room to, to allow people to come in? Um, things like self-guided tours. Again, if I even if I have on-site staff, they may close the office at five. But if my potential resident doesn't get off work till six and then doesn't get over to the building till seven, we're seeing a massive uptick on being able to use the self-guided tour as a feature to potentially rent the additional spaces. If I can give those people access, temporary access from an app that allows for, you know, the, the perimeter building, the, uh, the demo unit and a couple of amenity spaces within their particular window that they've you know, predetermined, then that, that could be the make or break feature that allows them to rent your space. Now you might be looking at this list with a bit of a paralysis by analysis and wondering how do I even get started? Do I need an integrator? Can I handle this in house with my own staff? Do I, how do I purchase the components? The, the very first thing is again, where do I start? We'll talk about where are you in the, you know, call it maturity spectrum of access control, you know, common things to look at, things to consider when selecting the appropriate softwares. Am I, am I being locked into a proprietary system or does my uh, hardware allow for expandability? Because what is relevant to me today may not be relevant to me in five years. Or if I'm selling this building with, you know, a particular intent today and the next owners may be going down a different path. Where am I and what's my plan uh, for in the short and long term? The very first step to will be looking at your own building. Whether this is a new construction project that you're working on with an architect or a renovation project that you're looking at upgrading, the question is what is my time frame and my budget? And what do I plan on doing in both the short term and the long term? Taking inventory, do I already have any you know, uh, smart locks on site? Am I still working with brass keys? Or am I starting from step one? Are you looking to build and flip this project or is this a long-term investment that you plan on holding? Now there are different common area access control situations and again different areas of the country, different multifamily verticals, different things are going to have different you know spaces that are relevant to them. A lot of people don't realize that still utilizing brass keys and deadbolts is a form of access control. And if that's what's relevant to you and that's what fits in your budget, that's great. From there, getting a lot of the customers and the developers and the owners and the property staff to understand you don't have to jump from step one all the way to, stay to step 10. You don't have to jump to the bleeding edge of technology and the latest and greatest in terms of features and software and hardware. If, if you don't have the timeline or the budget or the customer base that's requiring it, that's fine. You can stair step it uh, as you go based on your needs and budget. You may be going from stage one to stage three, and that's fine. 
we'll review some of the common access control situations and where you can go from there. Again, starting with stage one, we've had brass keys and deadbolts for years, if not decades. That is where a lot of places start, especially uh, in some of the developers that we're talking to that they're go to market for that retro for, retrofit aftermarket market. Uh, they're seeing a lot of these buildings that may be B and C level and they want to, they want to, you know, upgrade them. They want to put a little paint and carpet and spit and polish into it. And while we're doing it, let's look at adding some access control or upgrading the existing access control. From there, we may have some buildings that do have some, you know, electronic deadbolts or some offline scenarios or some non-electronic keypad locks. Again, I personally, this is my own opinion, do not like to use pin codes because pin codes, in my opinion, are not secure. As soon as I see out in the world that you you put in one, two, three, four into the into the code, that's not secure anymore. It also doesn't show that John Smith came into unit 101 at 235 on Tuesday. It just showed that somebody in the world used code 1234. If you look at something that's more credential driven that is assigned to a user and credential could mean anything it could mean key fob it could mean badge it could be phone it could be you know wristband it could be utilizing the uh, the smartwatch um jumping from technology to technology is uh, we're seeing an evolution there as well so again stage two might you might have a mix of mechanical locks with some non-connected electronics again you might have some pin codes and whatnot on some common areas stage three you may already have some key fobs on site, whether those are the old prox fobs or the old magstripe cards, or you made a jump to using key fobs on some of the areas of the building. You may just have the perimeter with some access control and a blend of uh, online and offline. And you want to go into what is the next step. Do I have key fobs on the units and I wanna add in some parking or some elevators? Or on the flip side, do I do I have the perimeter and I want to start adding to the units themselves? Stage four and stage five is actually when we start going into that, you know, smart world. Do I want to have my units online? Do I need, can I utilize an offline smart credential? Um, this is where we jump from, you know, kind of just access control in, into more of the smart scenario. Do I need to worry about some of the other things that we saw on the on the previous pages with uh, where am I tying it into things like the thermostat or the leasing software? Do I need to worry about a long range parking gate that I'm going to uh, include in on again, you know, if that is a space that I can rent out to my residents for another income stream, then great. And then stage five, is, again, is the end all be all. That's where we can include every feature uh, that is relevant to to my particular building. If I am downtown and it is the premier uh, spot where uh, the guys across the street have some of the bells and whistles that I want to include, what do I need to add to my building that is going to make it more attractive than the ones across the street? Again, as we determine our next steps, what factors do I need to consider? What's important? Do I have an integrator in the area that works with a particular software that I think might be a good pick? That's one of the questions that you need to address. Once we narrow down those dozens, if not hundreds of softwares down to the, you know, call it dozen or so that at least in my world, I've recommended for the multifamily vertical. Do I have somebody that knows how to do that software? Who is going to do the training? How do I source it? Some of the major things that I need to consider when selecting a provider do they have a foundation that's long lasting? Is this something that they may still be around in 10 years? We've seen several advances in the multifamily vertical because this is an absolutely booming market and you're seeing new companies pop up left and right. It's absolutely creating innovation in, in the market. Um, now, that on the flip side is, do they have open architecture? Or is this somewhat of a closed proprietary system? We talked about this earlier. Is this something that's gonna lock me in to what I bought today in five years or in three years? As we determine, there's you see several different technology words being thrown around. Bluetooth, Z-Wave, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, online, offline, no tour, NFC, Blue BLE. 
what do those mean? What if those are what's the hot thing today, but then something else comes in five years and completely overtakes it? Is the hardware that I purchased expandable? Can I swap a chip out that allows me to you know, jump to the next technology? Am I tied into a hub-based system? Can I do the same things online as I can do offline? Is the architecture for the software expandable to where if they don't necessarily tie into it natively, can they make a connection to that? If I have a wonderful software that handles the access control, but I need to have a package delivery service that is somewhat independent, but I, I think it's a phenomenal fit for my building, can I make that deep connection to that particular software? Making sure that I utilize quality products and software, making sure that what I buy, you know, I'm, you know, spending uh, the money on these products, am I going to have to replace them in three years? Uh, do they actually function how I want them to? I've walked into so many different sites where they just say, well, this is what we've always used. Is that what you want? Or is that just what you happen to have at hand at the time? And a lot of the times, what about customer support? Do they actually have somebody that can pick up the phone? Do they have a live chat? Do they do 24 seven? Uh, in terms of the local supplier, you know, your local integrator, do they have the ability to roll a truck if I have something where I, I do need hands-on, boots on the ground service? And what sort of partner alliances do they have? Again, we've talked about some of the things that are relevant to the prop tech from the, the of course, it's gonna start with the security and the, the, you know, the locks on the door. But again, what about the Wi-Fi? What about the property management software? What about the, the self-guided tours? Now, once we have our path kind of framed out or outlined, where do I go from there? How do I purchase everything? Do I purchase it all from one source? If this is a new construction project that is uh, ground up, can I purchase the electronics from the same place I'm buying my you know, mechanical hardware? Uh, what are the installation options? Is this something where I have to have a particular trade that is licensed and in, for low voltage in my area? Or is this something that, again, if I have on staff maintenance guys that are pretty handy with a screwdriver, can I put this on myself? Who trains the staff? The integrator may know this software in and out, but once they leave, how does the person that is signing somebody up for a two-year lease in Unit 101 how do, that, how do they make that fob work? Can I use a fob and my phone? So who is gonna train the team and the residents? And again, how do I integrate with the other systems I may already have in place, such as the leasing software? As we wrap up, we've looked at several key components and there still may be several questions going through your head. My suggestion would be to review what we've looked at for where you are today in your current plan, both short-term and long-term, and always feel free to reach out to your local Allegiant PropTech specialist, such as myself, and we would gladly walk you through as much of the process as needed.